morning, everybody, and welcome to another Sunday morning vlog. Good morning from the studio, and good morning from Retro Dale and Paula. <laughs> what do you think about these? I found these on Facebook, and they were really cheap. And guess what? When I got them home, they were even cheaper. They're just retro and I just loved them. <laughs> They're so mid-century modern and all these bright colors and geometric patterns plus it's a guitar. <laughs> and we got to use it in this video because we are going to go back to an earlier video and spruce it up a bit. Yeah what happened was the computer that we've been using for almost four years for all our editing yeah. tasks is just done. It can't keep up with what Dale's trying to do these days. Yeah, the Sahara video that I did, I barely got through that one. And uh, so we took a little trip to California, first of all, to see our granddaughter. Second of all, our son has a boatload of computers, and he lent us one of the best ones he has. And uh, I think uh, we could even buy it from him. Yeah, it's a screaming fast Mac, and it's totally up to the task of all of our future vlogs. But it did take us quite some time to get that set up. So it really severely cut into our vlog yeah. producing time this week. But we are set now. Uh, we're gonna have no problem uh, doing videos after this. So what we did, what we went back, every, if it, if a lot of people have been asking, what did you do back then? Do you have any film or any of that stuff that where you were performing? Well, yeah, I do. I have one video that my father took with one of those old camcorders. He came to one of my shows with a band that I was uh, uh, singing with and uh, he filmed it, and it's the only archive of my act. It's back in the late 1980s, and this is so precious to us that, you know, 50-pound camcorder on his shoulder, he filmed the whole thing. The video's not great, but the audio is good. Yeah, the audio came out pretty good. Uh, and let me just say something about my, my father. When I was, uh, I, I had rheumatic fever when I was five years old. So I was laid up pretty much. I was in hospitals, but I was laid up in bed. Music was the only thing that I had to listen to, and I grew to love it. And my father loved music as well. Up there on the point in uh, Canada, sometimes he'd make a little bonfire. They'd break out the guitars, and people would sing. This picture that I'm going to show you right here, I think I'm five years old. This was my first time ever singing in front of a microphone <laughs> with my father playing the guitar. What a great memory. Yeah, great memory. All right. Uh, this video is uh, 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 with a band called the Harry Hershey Orchestra. And Harry was the band leader and, uh, and uh, my friend back then. We actually wrote a couple shows together, and we'll be telling you about that a little bit later on. But there's a couple people I wanted to mention uh, just before we moved on a little bit. Uh, Harry Damis, the guy on drums, a very nice guy, told me one thing uh, on a break, and he said, you know what, Dale? No matter what you do out there in show business, always go and take the job or audition for the job. And I, I followed that lead. I really did. I mean, the Follies Berger, all that stuff. I followed what he said, and it really did work. Even if you, He even said, even if you can't do it, at least... Give it a try and see what happens. Maybe some doors will open up for you. So uh, <laughs> Say yes is the moral of that story, right. especially in show business. <laughs> Don't be afraid to, to go out of your comfort zone and get out there and just try things. I did, and it really worked for me. Uh, uh, the other thing I wanted to say was uh, I was going to talk about the bass player, Armin Anelli. He worked for the uh, 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 Benny Goodman Orchestra, and he was a trumpet player. Blew his lip out. Couldn't play no more music. So talk about going out of your comfort zone, he said, I'm going to learn how to play the bass guitar, and he did. And uh, he played that bass guitar until he uh, lost his hearing, and then he retired. <laughs> That's the thing about a live performer. Once a live performer, always a live performer, and if you switch instruments, you do what you got to do. So a little bit about me. Uh, when I performed, um, I had I had an act, and I there was an agent that booked me uh, uh, back then. I used to do the Holiday Inn circuits and the uh, Hospitality Inn circuits, and you would work six days a week. You worked Monday through Saturday, and then you'd have Sunday off. Well, this agent, and I said, all I wanted to do was do my act. Those things, I was working with a trio or a duo or by myself, and just playing, you know, back, basically background music for people who were in, in the lounge. And uh, I said, I just want to do my act. So he would book me uh, probably three states over from where I was working at the Holiday Inn. <laughs> but I used to drive that, those three states just to get in one lousy show. And uh, so I could uh, hone my act. And it did. It worked. And uh, I actually got to perform it in uh, Las Vegas. Yes, and you are going to see a little bit of it circa about 1988. So get ready, my friends, because this adventure starts right now. You 
may be king and you may possess the world and all of it's gold. As it starts, shut up!
good time. Oh, yeah. Like the ball, and I keep swinging. Tell them to scram. I'm telling my drum. You gotta let me live. This is the end. And I'm like, it's my friend. Let it sit, let it back away. I'm telling you what, those, those arm, arm movements, it was like kung fu <laughs> up there. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I am so embarrassed to have you see that. I am really embarrassed, but I'm so grateful that my father was there to at least capture it for me, and maybe my granddaughter one day will want to see that. But uh, I hope this fulfills your uh, wanting of wanting to see me what I used to do, right? Yeah, he did a nice job of kind of pulling in, you know, the banjo and the yodel and a ballad and a fast tempo. And Can, do you I, I, I think you're such a showman. I think you're great. Do you believe I yodeled? Oh my God. You're an actually great yodeler. Oh. No, he told you that story about being sick in bed. He taught himself to yodel way back when he was like five years old. Did I, you not? I did. Yeah. I, I used to listen to music, like I said in the first segment. And Harry Belafonte uh, did some songs. And he didn't quite yodel, but he had that sort of thing, you know, day, oh, day, you know, that kind of stuff. And so I practiced yodeling, and I got to be pretty good at it. Yeah. 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 So, <laughs> all right. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, uh, I hope you enjoyed this. And those of you that stuck around, thank you so much. I really do appreciate that. Uh, what I want to do, I want to go out on, on uh, a note, because this is 4th of July weekend. Uh, Harry and I wrote a couple of shows together. Uh, one of them was called Stepping Out. The other one was called Victory 1945. And uh, we last performed that in 19... What? 95. It was actually a celebration of the 50th anniversary of the end of World War II. So they wrote it in 1995, and you performed it for several years yeah, after we that. Did. It was incredibly popular, very nostalgic. So 20 years after we performed it, uh, he gives me a call and he says, Hey, Dale, we're going to reprise the show. We're going to take it to Florida. We're going to do it for Honor Flight. Now, Honor Flight, that's, that is a, an organization, a great organization, that takes vets on an airplane free of charge to Washington, D.C. to see either uh, whatever memorial uh, that they fought in. Whatever been, campaign they yeah, fought in. Yeah, could have been, right. uh, could have been Vietnam or uh, World War Korea, II, World Korea. War II. Yeah. So uh, we did this for free, and he asked me if I wanted to do it, and I said no. <laughs> I said, absolutely not. I said, too many years I, have gone too by. Many years had gone by. I was overweight. I just it was not comfortable. I had not been on stage for quite a while at that time. So uh, he, he said, OK, but I just want to spice it up a little bit. The entire cast that you worked with back then is going to be there, except for one young lady who passed away. How could I turn it down? Right? You didn't. I didn't. <laughs> so uh, Paul and I took the trip over to Florida, and we performed the show, and it was a big hit. We sent a bunch of guys to Honor Flight. I think it was sold out, too. It was a huge crowd. They were in a huge auditorium. It was great. So after the show, that got our juices flowing, and Harry and I both got to talking, you know, because there was a lot of guys that were there that were in the Korean War. They came to see the show. We got to we we t we had run this idea back and forth uh, a long time ago after we did the World War II show, but he said let's do it let's put it together. Uh, so we did. I wrote the whole entire script. Harry went to a hotel in Florida and he stayed there, locked himself in a room for a week, and wrote the entire musical score for it. And at night. In the lobby, there was a piano there. He would just sit down at the piano and play for the people, and nobody knew that he was a professional musician. He just played for the people for free. He had a great time. The show was looking good. People were very interested in it. Unfortunately, life gets in the way. And uh, Harry died of cancer before we got to do the show, and it, it's been shelved ever since. And uh, uh, But I, I think... For him to be able to write that music in the last days of his life, and it was very... It gave him purpose. Give him purpose. Yeah. And uh, honestly, uh, uh, it really was the, the last days of his life because he, he, he passed away not that long after uh, finishing writing it. Anyway, 4th of July is coming up. That Victory 1945 show was a big hit. And it was also the last time I ever performed in public. <laughs> On a big old stage with lights and a band. Lights and a band. And I'll tell you, I don't look real good in this video I'm going to show you, but this was my last performance. And since this is uh, coming up, to, uh, tomorrow's going to be July 4th, 
This is perfect way to end this video. This is a song, it's called Stage Door Canteen. It's a soldier who goes to the canteen. I don't know if you know what canteens were, but stars used to do that, and people used to give the donuts, and they do shows and all that kind of stuff. But the song is about a guy who fell in love with this girl who was passing out donuts, and he would just take the donuts and then eat them up and then get more donuts. Anyway, it's called uh, I Left My Heart at the Stage Door Canteen because at the end of the song, he goes off to war and uh, never sees her again. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, have a wonderful, wonderful 4th of July, right? Happy birthday, America. All right, I hope you enjoy this. I left my heart at the stage door I left it there with a girl named Eileen. Till all she had was on <laughs> I kept on dumping donuts Till she got on